Morning. Hey, uh, made it to Thursday and uh, essentially just uh, about to ready to go to ride to work. I've got my smoothie here, uh, bananas and strawberries again today. It's one of my favourite combinations, really, really tasty. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to down that before I get on my bike. And I just wanted to share something new I got with you. Uh, Rachel found this. It's a little camera she's actually had for a while, but she totally forgot she had. Does some HD videos. It's waterproof and shockproof. So uh, I'll try using this on the bike actually, and then see if I can get any good footage with that. As uh, my experiences with cycling, holding like a DSLR style thing, uh, a bit nerve wracking. Definitely, I don't really want to break and let go of it and have it smash on the floor or anything like that. So. Uh, this should be a good alternative and we'll see if I actually get some good quality footage with it. Uh, as for the weather, it's a very very nice sunny day in England. So uh, yeah, perfect weather for riding. Uh, about 15 degrees, so again nice and cool. Should be good, looking forward to it. There you go, beautiful sunny day in England. Riding my bike, as you can see I've got my little respiratory mask thing hanging down. Not going too bad. It's a very lovely morning. Just wanted to share one thing I noticed uh, about doing all these vlogs is uh, how like basically you turned up to be you end up being a cameraman, an actor, or not really an actor, but yourself really, and uh, you end up being the director or the kind of uh, editor. Basically, you're a whole film crew in one. Which is kind of cool, and it's given me some good experience in regards to like learning to be on camera, learning to actually take good shots as a cameraman, and even like uh, editing well. Play spend your time on the computer. Anyway, better off by bike for this reason alone. See all these cars? So easy to overtake when you're on a bike, and just filter all the way down the side. Yeah. I'll leave you to enjoy the view. Yeah, just saw a little poster thing actually that made me want to comment on it. Uh, Essentially, it's just a milkshake with another 20 grams of protein added. But really, I don't really want to understand. What is it that makes people think that they need more protein? Is it purely marketing? Or do people think that because they're doing a little bit of exercise, they need to eat stupid amounts of protein? And you do realize you have to digest every single gram of it. And as the World Health Authorization has said, you only need about 10% of your diet as protein. So all these kind of extra 20 grams here and there aren't really beneficial to you. They're essentially slowing you down. I've even seen like ice cream that's pretty much like 80% protein. What's the point? Just get sorbet, get the sugar. That's what you really need. Yeah, it's been a good day so far. I do love my morning rides, definitely wakes me up better than anything else I've ever done. Probably uh, skydiving or bungee jumping might do the same thing, but uh, yeah, can't really skydive to get to work, although that would be really fucking cool. Uh, other than that, I do wonder how stupid I look with this mask on, but hey, this is a uh, fun and game, so when I'm editing this video. Either way, should be a good day, sun is shining, it's a Thursday. I'm just very happy to almost be at the weekend. Time to catch up on some sleep, I think. Don't need none of that shit. Just need some of these. Hey, back at work. Uh, got my fruit. This is my after workout uh, meal. Essentially, it's five peaches and a big apple. Uh, that's all you really need after workout, especially as I've only done about half an hour's worth, something like a six mile ride. Basically, just replenish the calories I've lost, replenish some of the water I've lost, and gain some protein to repair my muscles. As 
everything in here has got about three to five percent protein that's all you really need you don't need a protein shake protein shakes are silly they're pointless and they're not necessary unless you've done ridiculous ultra marathon star running or a tour de france stage or something like that you really don't need a stupid amount of protein like all these things suggest straight after your meal it's literally just marketing and brainwashing you like whenever i did have a protein shake after a meal years ago when i wasn't a vegan and everything uh, i just found it didn't really do much i mean it helped me a little bit but I, I found it was more the sugar and everything else that i added to my protein shake that actually helped more not to mention it's just chemicals or like a powder with water. There's no real kind of life to it. So it's not gonna bring life to your body. It's just gonna be like eating a vitamin C pill or something like that. You're better off getting the real thing, better off getting it from fruit, some real living protein. I mean, if I stick two of these peach ends together, shove it back in the fridge, I guarantee you within a few days, it will probably seal back together and replenish itself. I don't think meat will do that. I don't think anything else would really do that other than fruit or living plants. So here's my point to you. You might as well be made out of living food rather than dead food and chemicals, which is again why I don't really support the idea of this kind of Soylent style diet, which is having um, this kind of, essentially it's a kind of protein shake style thing, but it's a shake that's designed to uh, cover everything you need with all the vitamins and minerals. But as scientists have said and nutritionists have said, we have not discovered all the vitamins. We don't know how all the minerals interact with each other. So I think it's best left to nature to kind of work out what we need and how we basically do it rather than us man making chemicals and putting everything together as we think we know best about what to do with our bodies when really I think the best thing to do is eat plants and then that's, you feel the best out of that, especially from my experience anyway. Either way, I'm going to get on with some work. I will see you guys at lunchtime. Hey guys, outside on the front porch bit of the veranda of my room uh, at the top. Uh, give me a little view of outside my house. Okay, that's my road. So yeah, me again. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd answer a question someone asked on the comments of one of my videos which was uh, why I'm not 100% fully raw. That, that person was actually Jennifer, so if you're watching, thanks for watching and subbing to my videos. Uh, yeah, the reason why I'm not 100% raw is because I don't find it truly sustainable. I mean, the results of when I am fully 100% raw, like some days where all I will eat is fruit in a smoothie, like I find I'm generally the best on those days and the next day I definitely feel like I have lots of energy. But I just find I kind of crave tomato, like not um, like tomatoes. I meant uh, potatoes and kind of cooked food a lot of the time, especially rice. I really do quite enjoy the flavour of rice, especially wild rice, brown rice, and the texture of it. And being a hundred percent raw just doesn't give me the option to do that. Which kind of uh, yeah, I just kind of miss certain foods. Like you can't really have a raw curry the same way you can have a cooked curry. At least for me, part of the heat and that kind of stuff is what makes it so I'm, I'm not sure if you can warm up raw food or how the, the weird levels of it because I know there's different people that class it to like if it's above like 120 degrees it's not raw but like, yeah, there's varying levels of that but for me it's either raw or it's cooked and I generally stick to raw till four I find that fruit is great all the way up to dinner but I like to treat myself with some pasta now and again and like Broccoli just isn't the same raw as it is steamed and cooked in that kind of way. Same with like, uh, you've got squashes, there's so many different types of squashes that you can have. There's just so much more variety when you're not raw and that is kind of what I like. I mean, for me, the, the abundance of the vegan diet is one of the appealing factors of it. I mean, yeah, you're not a meat eater, you don't have uh, all the different types of meat and cheese and that kind of stuff. But honestly, with just like the amount of fruit and veg alone that I've had in the last few years, it's like at least the last year when since I've been doing this, it's just ridiculous. Like I've had so many different types of squashes I would never have bothered to try. Same with like varying between like sweet potato and normal potato and stuff. I mean I did a lot of this beforehand. I just basically revolved every single meal around meat of some kind or basically kind of was like, oh yeah, I want cheese on everything and would smother things with cheese to the point where I wouldn't really taste much more than that. And now I've learned 
that there's more to cooking than that and also kind of more to like the varieties of food and playing with combinations and also how I don't really have much salt in my diet. Uh, it does basically bring out the flavour of a lot of the plants I eat quite a bit. Anyway, my cat's being quite cute so <laughs> I thought I'd show her to you guys. There you go Matt. How you doing? Yeah, as I was saying, uh, yeah, I just find there's so much more variety and also in kind of social gatherings when I'm with friends, I just kind of feel bad because I basically I'm like, I'm either going to have a smoothie or a salad and that's pretty much all my options, especially if we're going out somewhere that like there's just nothing there. So essentially because I'm not, I don't really know many vegans, I'm pretty much one of the only vegans I know uh, and doing stuff like that. So. It's kind of hard for me to essentially be fully raw without being completely antisocial and not seeing anyone and just basically being that person that doesn't really eat much kind of other than raw food and I don't know, I find the results I get from having raw till four are pretty much what I'm looking for. Certain days I like to go a bit more raw, certain days like I won't get the option to have bananas and smoothie for lunch so I have rice for lunch but sometimes I'll, I'll still crave fruit so I might have a smoothie after that in the evening for dinner but it's just nice to have the variety uh, and that's pretty much what gets me into raw till four and keeps me going with it as if I had pretty much had to stick to raw vegan fully 8 10 10 in that way then I probably would fall off the bandwagon eventually and probably crave into some cheese because I was such a big person for cheese but I don't anymore. I mean, there's nutritional yeast. I can always add it to some pasta and things like that. There's loads of vegan cheese recipes you can have. And there's even a pizza place that's opened up around the corner that has vegan cheese as a topping. Granted, quite high in fat, so only once uh, in a while kind of treat. But, pff, hey, I get to have real pizza again in some kind of way. So for me, that makes it like as a complete whole package. So, yeah, that's it for me, really. Uh, I'm going to stick to Raw Tour 4 for the continuable, uh, foreseeable future and uh, we'll see how things go but uh, yeah I'm liking the results I see so far and I uh, can't wait to see what it'll be like in another couple years Yum Hey guys just in my kitchen about to eat this wonderful dinner that Rachel's made me you can see it is a pasta bake with um, a sweet potato sauce and broccoli in fact Rachel Tell us what's in this, <laughs> this sauce. <laughs> Go on. It's not sweet potato. Is it not? Oh, my bad. Go on. No, Do it. No. I believe in you. No. Do it. Just no. tell me. The camera is not here. What's in it? <laughs> what's in the sauce? Um. Go. Go on. It's got. Butternut squash, mm -hmm. roasted butternut squash. Yep. Uh, like a handful of cashew nuts and onion and garlic, water and mm. nutritional yeast. Mm. And that's pretty much it. Fair enough. And what else is in this? Just broccoli? Broccoli and pasta. Oh, yum. Is it wheat pasta or what normal pasta um, is it? I think it's rice pasta. Oh, nice. Cool. And how does it taste? Pretty good. Cool. So, uh, there you have it. This is our dinner for tonight. Uh, sorry I didn't make a little video of us showing how they did it, but hey, Rachel made it for me, so I'm not really complaining.